edition of the second half health and fitness show uh, it's brought to you by Movement Academy and this month it's sponsored by St. Anthony's Healthcare and Rehab. Um, so first of all though uh, we do have Reggie Fielding uh, sitting here next to me today on my right. How you doing Reggie? Good, Good morning. morning. Doing well. Morning. Doing well. Reggie and I uh, are fraternity brothers and, and known each other for uh, a number of years, probably too many years to uh, want to indulge in and uh, and talk about. But uh, what we're going to do this morning to start off is we're going to talk a little bit about the holiday blues. And you know, holidays are are difficult for some people, um, Absolutely. you know, depending on on loss of, uh, you know, a loved one. Uh, mom dad you know grandmother a, a, a grandfather and it's people always don't have the joy you know the joy is, has changed over the years for for various reasons and sometimes we don't really know like why you know how do we deal with issues like this how do we continue to make it better um even though we've had some difficulties and, and bring joy especially you know, to our kids you know you and i you know, we have little ones now. Your mind's a teenager, not so much little, but, yeah. but yours are. So how do you continue bringing them joy and making them feel good? Maybe if, if you don't, um, because of some past experiences. So we wanted to talk a little bit about that today. And then after we talk with Reggie, and then we're going to bring on John Morvant and Diane Floyd, again from St. Anthony's Healthcare and Rehab, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the things they do at, at their nursing home in Metairie and bringing joy around the holidays and what to look for. And then we'll talk also a little bit about uh, some goals. You know, How did you end up uh, 2017? What are some things you can do for 2018 to make it better? Yeah, everybody puts off uh, things now when the holidays come. We'll put off our exercise. We'll put off how we want to eat right. You know, And, and oh, we'll just wait for, for January to come around and, and then – then start the insanity all over again. Well, there's a lot to do during the holidays. Right. There's a lot of a lot of right. preparations. A lot of, and, and it takes it takes a it takes energy. It takes a lot of it does time and 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 effort to to, um, to get through the just to get through the holidays. And that's one thing we're going to focus on today. Is is um, one of the main things is to to take care of yourself. Right. There are ways right. to uh, to ensure. Uh, the strength to make it through the holidays, um, added on to it, the loss of someone significant to the family, you know, it's just um, a recipe for exhaustion before you even get through the through the celebration, so to speak. So yeah. there is a focus on on yourself and to be a little selfish. Definitely, and and in the in the car over here it was we had some good conversation, you know, talking about health and one of the top areas, obviously, is to keep yourself healthy um, during that time. And, and so kind of expand a little bit um, on, yeah. on that. What are some things that from a, a health standpoint for ourselves we can do as we go through some grieving and, and possible mourning? Yeah, absolutely. The physical, your physical health and just physically having the, the, the strength to make it through, um, it, it, it takes pacing, pacing yourself. Um, you know the considerable energy that it's going to take to get through, uh, and then the, the loss of a loved one. You know, is potential meltdown and exhaustion um, before you even get through to the to the celebration. But, mm -hmm. but I would say to to slow down, take a take a deep breath, kind of slow down. You know what we what what we did and what you may have done in past past Christmases, past holiday season, is um, is to go out and buy gifts for for everyone in the family or close friends. And maybe this year you can uh, buy gift certificates or, or, you know, just make that whole process of, of getting the gifts a little bit easier on yourself. Right, um, right. Because that, that's a stress and, and, and to the part about it, you know, some of the current trends, the amount of money spent on gifts every year is astounding. It is so. astounding, too, yeah. Well, it's just the time it takes to, to go to the stores and make a decision for each person what that, what that gift is going to be. You know, people will understand if, if you don't put it as much time and thought into those gifts. You know, just get a gift certificate this year. Um, and, and don't be afraid to say no. You know, you're going to have a lot of invitations to, to, to uh, parties and and 
going to, to family members' houses, and it just people understand that if that, that you're not going to be able to attend all of these, and if if uh, you're experiencing loss of a spouse, to go to these um, parties and to go single is is extremely difficult, especially the first year following the death. And so, you know, don't be afraid to say no. People understand um, kind of what you're going through. Uh, one of the main things is to to eat and to drink and to sleep. Sleep is very important to to maintain your strength throughout. So, um, and and eating and drinking is probably um, you know the last thing on your mind right, you know, when you're right. when you're going through. But but to hi- keep hydrated, uh, keep your proteins up, keep you know. Eat well, force yourself to eat, and and really, if you need to go see a doctor and get some help with a sleep aid, you know the sleep is very important as well. Yeah, and you know th- those are actually that's good advice on a regular basis, but especially oh, even more while you are going through these. And you're right, maybe you don't have the appetite, maybe you, you don't, you think I, I don't need any water, or you do have problems sleeping because of you know the memories that, that have come on up. So. You know, it's important to get all those things every day, regardless of your grieving, but especially while you're going through uh, those types of circumstances. And the increased amount of stress that's on you for, you know, stress can be a, stress is, is horrible, can um, can manifest itself physically in, in, in ways that, uh, so just kind of keeping that stress level, keeping hydrated and keeping yourself fed and your strength up, mm-hmm. you know, is going to keep you uh, from, from, you could become sick or. Right. Um, and then I, there's so many, I know just being at the funeral home and, and um, being a part of the funeral services. And, and I, I hear so many people tell, tell the family, Oh, just give me a call. If you need anything, let me know what you, what yeah, you need. Yeah, all the time. Everybody says it. Everybody, Everybody says it. And, and, and I know that very few, very few people ever take those friends up on their offer, family members. But, you know, there's, this is a time to be selfish. You should. You should take an opportunity. Call those. Reach out and call those people and be specific with what you want, what you need. If you need a ride somewhere or, you know, if you need need some help, you you were... Uh, you promise to bring a covered dish to a to a certain to a gathering of friends and and you know maybe get some help with with that. Um, but there are there are plenty of ways that you can be specific to let people know exactly how um, to help you and 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 to give you what you need. You just have to express it. You have to be the one to pick up the phone and do it because you know there's so many people that 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 want to help that want to do right, things. Right. Right. <clears throat> Just the, the, the fear of not knowing what to do exactly keeps them from doing anything at all. And yeah, we, we don't know from uh, an assistance standpoint, you know, what what is necessary. And uh, it's just a general blanket, hey, I'll, I'll help you with whatever you, you, you need. But you're right, if we don't know, and it's hard to communicate, I'm sure. And, and maybe that person going through the mourning and grieving is thinking that I, um, it's too much to ask already. You know, you've already given support. I, I don't... Sure, I need a ride, but I don't want to ask you. But it's important to, like you said, communicate. Let that be known. I need a ride, or you know, I'm really kind of lonely. Can we go to lunch on Tuesday, for an yeah, example? Absolutely. Um, things like that can can be a can be a a great help. It's just that that's a way to confirm the love and the support that people do have for you. And right. and. You know, a, a funeral service is the same way. One of the one of the last things you would think that that you'd want to do after the the loss of a loved one, one of the m- most you know difficult times in your life, would be to put yourself in a room full of you know a hundred of your closest friends. You know, it, it, that seems you know like the last thing you would want to do. But right. to really to to firsthand to, to to see and to feel that love and support is is important and and helps you helps you get through the difficult times and we talked about um traditions you know there's traditions that we've had that we learned when we were a kid and going through what whatever they may be for your holiday season of uh you know storytelling or or certain meals or or the way um the order of of how gifts are open for example um you know those are important and when uh grandma's turn uh she's not there Right, so she's not there in that rotation now. So, how do you handle something like that when 
grandma's not around to, to open her gifts or, or say that prayer. That's, 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 that's another really tough thing. Is when, when, when an important part of the family, that family unit's no longer there, you know, that role still needs to be filled to an extent, you know, that what that, that role needs to be filled and it takes it takes courage. It takes it takes courage for someone to step in and to fill that role. And sometimes one person can't fill it. It'll take a um, a group effort for for um, to, to fill that role. Right. Um, right. And, and I agree there's not an easy answer for it, but it does take courage. I know uh, the last uh, last Christmas was the first without uh, my grandfather there. And it, there's a little bit of that awkward silence um, as you go through things and, and you expect, hey, to open the gifts. Uh, my, my grandfather didn't say, say the prayer, but uh, just a presence around you know, or a storytelling presence. And oh, um, yeah. it's, a, it's difficult to go through, but you have to, and you gotta got to learn about going through with it. And you're stronger. You're stronger than you think. You know, you have to know that, that, you know, a renewed focus on the reason for the season and the love and support of family and friends, uh, you, you can and you will make it through these difficult times. You right. can and will. You just have to pace yourself, be a little selfish, and, um, and, and make sure, make sure you're, you're taking care of yourself. Um, but you can, you can give uh, to embrace... You, you, Embracing the grief helps to, to try and deny it or try to, to hold back tears or, or mm -hmm. to act like, you know, to go through the motions like, like nothing, nothing's wrong or nothing's changed is, um, is pointless. You know, that's not right. a healthy, healthy way to grieve. Right, right. You don't want to be in, uh, in denial or just try to brush over it. So as we um, are going to transition uh, in a minute or so here to, to our break, when we come back, we'll... Talk about some top five things that you can do to uh, help mitigate um, the feelings that you have and, and get through this, this holiday season and any holiday season. And then we'll also talk a little about uh, some goals. You know, How have you done with your goals finishing up this year and transitioning into a 2018? So stay with us. Some great mm -hmm. information coming up. Come outside again? I forgot. See, such a beautiful day. Wait, that's why I came out here. I left my keys out here. Where could they be? Oh, they're right here on the ground. Let me just bend down and pick them up for a second. Oh, oh, oh! Man, I sure wish I had the Movement Academy easy to use balance and memory restoration program this holiday season. Tired of feeling like a number instead of a person when you go to the doctor? Well, at GenCare Senior Medical Center, we know your name. We know your family. We know you like a friend and treat you that way. Sometimes I forget she's the doctor and I'll say, girl, you know I had a headache so bad the other day. I like GenCare's approach. I smile when I leave GenCare. I'm just like going to one of my relatives' house. I can sit down and talk. I feel like family. I really enjoy my doctor. I have a personal relationship with him, and he truly is devoted to health care providing rather than just make a buck. Oh, Dr. Jones and I are experiencing a great relationship because he listens. Just because we've gotten older, it doesn't mean that we're not able to do. At GenCare, our doctors take the time you need. We listen. We don't rush you. Isn't it time you felt the GenCare difference? Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. 
NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. here with my friend and uh, fraternity brother Reggie Fielding talking a little bit about um, holiday loss and, and how to deal with it. So we'll we'll recap here uh, the top five things really that you can do to, to help with the holiday blues and make sure um, that you get yourself right and you mourn correctly. So Reggie, what, what were those top five things there? Well, taking care of yourself, I think, um, you know, like we mentioned earlier, Slow down. Kind of make make the make the holiday season as easy on yourself as you can. Right. You know, instead of buying gifts, maybe get gift certificates or make donations. Um, Making donations is a good thing. To yeah. uh, to a loved one's charity or um, eat, drink, and sleep very important. Express yourself specific wants and needs uh, to friends and family that have made offers to to right. help you. Um, you know, take them up on that offer. That's important. Um, you're going to cry. Uh, it's important to cry. Um, crying releases. There's, there's a mysterious release, you know, through tears that, that is inexplicable, but, but it's healthy and it helps. Uh, don't hold back those tears. People, people understand. Mm-hmm. You know, just step into another room and grab somebody and hold on to them and cry for a minute. That's, 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 a, healthy, that's a healthy expression. Um, and you know, embracing the grief, embracing it is maybe hard, and and you know there are ways to there are ways to do that. Uh, yeah, know, tell us, uh, give me a, a, a specific on how can we embrace the grief because that's not, I don't think a natural tendency. We want to yeah. push grief away. We don't want to acknowledge it, and we, we want to publicly, yeah, yeah, show that all right, everything's fine, everything's on the up and up, and. And sure, I, I'll, I admit I, I probably have done a, a fair share of not embracing the grief when I, I needed to in my, my losses. Yeah. Well, uh, giving, giving grief a specific time and place um, is helpful. Um, you know, our, our funeral facility has a, a tree of remembrance service every year in December, and it's, it's a place to come and, and light a candle and, and bring an ornament for a tree, for the tree that we have there. And, and you know, it's a place to cry. We've got a, a couple of ministers that speak and some music, but it's a place to come and um, to, to share with others that are experiencing a loss just like you. And, and um, it's, a, it's a place to cry and have that release so that when you do go back to your family, it's, it's, you've, you've, you've released a lot of that uh, done your mourning, so to speak. Right, right. Um, and um, there, there are ways to, uh, you know, before each meal, before the before your Christmas meal, um, you know, as you give thanks, give thanks uh, for for that loved one that's that's lost. Give thanks to God for the amount of time that 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 He gave gave us with that loved one. All right, absolutely. Um, and light a candle. There, there. Are, uh, some specific ways that you can you can do things to um, to memorialize or acknowledge acknowledge that loved one. Um, in our family, we've um, when my grandfather, my grandparents died, there we found hundreds of the little uh, movie reels. Oh yeah, um, and and so uh, my mother and especially of. Uh of holidays and, and yeah. opening gifts. I know I know my family has those and uh, everybody looks forward each year it's to crazy. to those few of the, those few little reels that have been that have been transferred into a DVD and we put those on you know just you, on a you, side you know, TV. You, you know when you you first um, were talking about uh, transferring them I was wondering if you're going to say transfer them to a VHS. Uh, I was waiting for you to actually say that because that was the first thing that came out of my mind. No, actually, actually, now they're 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 you can get them put onto an MP3 or or uh, yeah. You know, there's there's there's. I just uh, remember when that those 
get everything onto a video cassette. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we need. Let me put on Betamax on top of, of that. Yeah, hundreds of dollars. of dollars on the VHS, and then boom, it changes. <laughs> so, but, but no, we, yeah, they, they did it right. They've been ahead of the curve. We got DVDs and MP3s, and, and but everybody looks forward to seeing those videos. Oh yeah. Um, and laughing and, and embarrassment and, and having fun with. Oh it. gosh, yeah. I mean, they're just seeing yourselves as kids and and. You know, at that at that you know, grandparents' house, Santa Claus, and Santa Claus always came each year, and and we had fireworks going off, and, oh. and Santa catching on fire. And, oh, that's and, even better uh, when Santa yeah. catches on fire. That <laughs> yeah, is a memory uh, to last forever. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. You know, Roman candles going off in his beard. And, you know, it's it's um, wow. Yeah, you know, but every every year it's, we look forward to, to seeing those videos. And last year, uh, one of them came home with sound. Oh, and so oh man, my grand, to, to hear that voice you hadn't heard since '97, right? You know, was was um, right. Was a little moving. It was touching. It, yeah. it really was. It brought tears, but you know, healthy tears. Yeah. So let's transition a little bit. So I know this isn't necessarily your uh, expertise, but um, it kind of goes hand in hand. So when we talk about the end of the year here, and we're talking about goals, and you know, did you meet your goals? Did you meet your your financial goals did you meet your um health and wellness goals did you meet uh whatever your your vacation planning goals so those are all things as we've looked back on it and kind of in a bit of reflection and talk about you know videos and pictures and you and you see see those loved ones in ones did you meet your goals i mean how, how did you set them up at the beginning of the year to be accomplished were they were they vague or were they more specific? So, just uh, from you, I mean, do you set Not goals mine. for yourself? No, I haven't. And, uh, and that's, that's okay. Something I need to start. You know, and that's it's, okay. You don't, you can't really accomplish anything without without having in mind a, a goal set to achieve. You know, that's that's one way to. You know, that's one aspect of my life I need to. Right. Need to, so, need to do better. So we things. need when we're doing these goals, and especially looking back, were they kind of specific? And even though, uh, you know, health and, and fitness, this is part of it, you know, having a health goal, having a fitness goal. And is it something that, OK, I just want to lose weight this year? Well, you know, technically, if you lost a quarter of a pound, you've lost weight. But is that really what you wanted? Is that something that's going to make an impact on your life? Or, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds this year or I want to run a 5K, you know, things like that. So. It's important to be specific with them, yeah. And even with our business goals, you know, do you have a revenue goal? Do you have a new customer goal? Do you have um, a customer service goal? And as we set these up into 2018, again, let's think about them as something small you can do every day to achieve your goals. Not all right. It's January 1st. I'm gonna use weight loss because guess what? What are the top five resolutions coming into? Uh, 2018 or every year. Number one is lose weight, eat healthy. Again, yeah. very vague. Number two is some type of life or self improvement. Three, a better financial decisions. Four, believe it or not, quit smoking. You know that that's still still the number four goal out there. And number five, do more exciting things. And and those are come from statisticbrain.com uh, is where those uh, resolutions came from. But again, they're, they're very vague. So when we go into it and we just say, hey, I want to make better financial decisions. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? I mean, I, I, I want to only uh, spend uh, $20 um, for a case of beer this, this week. I mean, what, does, <laughs> what kind of a financial decision is, is that really for you? Well, saving up for a sp specific thing, saving up for a vacation right. um, would, be, would be one, one goal to set. Right. Um, you know, and, and how much money do you have do you want to set aside? So I'll give you for one me for one of my examples, it's kind of a big, hairy, audacious goal there. You kind of have BHAG, but I'd like to set aside twenty five hundred dollars for a vacation with my son. And I set that in July. So my goals don't necessarily go January to January, but it's still pretty specific. So I know what to go for and what to hit. And reviewing them on an ongoing basis. You know, don't just write them necessarily down hey, on January 1st, and then come December 31st, ooh, oh, wow, I actually wrote something that I had no idea about. 
wrote those goals on the back of January 1st page and <laughs> hadn't seen it since January 1st. That's yeah. right. Yeah. As your day planner. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you even use the like day planner. Is, is do more exciting things. What kind of goal is that? You yeah, what, is, what does that mean? Do yeah. more exciting things. Again, that that's different. That could be uh, bungee jumping. That could little be me kayaking, uh, having an adventure on your vacation. Right, that could be somewhere. crossing the street with your eyes closed. You know, I don't know. None of those <laughs> yeah. are really too safe, but I think we've done a few of those in our our time together. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> whether we realize it or not, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of that or not. <laughs> but yeah, we got to be specific on um, exciting. And uh, are they death defying or are they not too death defying? But uh, I think you, we need to expose our children to things right. that are exciting that that um, uh, you know that they they haven't seen yet. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's that's what's so great about children. You know, you, you can oh, be the first. To, you can be the first to, to expose or to share to these share things with them and, and, and just see the excitement on their right. faces. It's and the funny. the last of that though, you know, only eight percent of people actually keep their New Year's resolutions. Oh yeah. So think about that as you begin planning for 2018. Remember, only 8%. So how can you boost that number up? Stay with us. Yes. Hey, this is Matt Peel with Movement Academy. You know, it's Christmas time coming up, the holidays, but we want to make sure that this year you don't stop moving. Just because you're out having some fun, going to the parties, being with family, still get out there and move. So what we wanted to do is show you some exercises from Movement Academy's Active Aging Program that's pretty simple to do right there at home and can keep you moving this holiday season. All right. So we wanted to first show you, for those of you that are chair bound or maybe don't have a lot of mobility, a couple exercises here that will work both your ankles and your arms. The first one is called arm and hammer. So we can put both of our arms up and we'll just extend each side. You can do each arm for two to three sets of 10 repetitions. And then when you're done, we can do a heel to toe raise. couple of simple exercises that can just keep you moving again regardless of what your mobility level is. All right these next couple exercises are for those of you that maybe have assistance walking with a walker or a cane uh, or even again fully mobile and work with our balance. So we're going to do a two foot balance. We're going to start with our feet a little wider than shoulder width apart in athletic position. We're going to hold for a few seconds. We're going to bring them underneath our shoulders and then we're going to bring them together. So again, one more time, we're going to be kind of wide underneath our shoulders and bringing them together. That's called a two foot balance. The next movement is called a one step lateral. So we're going to step out laterally to each side, get kind of a half lunge, making sure you keep your one leg straight while the other one is bent. You can do that to each side, 10 to 12 repetitions, a couple sets, helps keep you moving. All right, so for those that are now fully mobile, or even if you do have a little assistance and are a little bit stronger, another simple, two simple moves we can do are just a simple lunge. So we can step forward with both feet, drop the back leg down, posture up, step back, and through. So again, both legs, down as low as you can go comfortably, push up through the front leg, and feet together again. The second move is called quick feet. This is kind of fun. We're going to be in a nice athletic position. We're going to step forward and backwards as fast as we can, leading with both feet. So you can do a couple sets of 10 to 12 reps with a lunge. Also with your quick feet, get your heart rate up, get the legs pumping. Again, all this can be found at movementacademy.net under our active aging program. For the end of this year, it's only $10.95 a month, no obligation, 
no ongoing contract, and I promise you're going to move better, you're going to think clearer with Movement Academy's Active Aging Program. St. Anthony's Healthcare and Rehab. We have John Morvant and we have Diane Floyd coming in and they're going to talk to us a little bit about, you know, what to look for, number one, in, in selecting a nursing home and then also what they do on the holidays. What are some things that you can help brighten your relatives with during these times? You know, we work the holiday blues. Now we're going to brighten it up a little bit and tell how can we make those that are still with us and, and maybe it is their, their last holiday or two. But how can we make that special for them? What are some things that can make it even more special for us as a whole? And then what does St. Anthony's do specifically that really sets them apart and and helps them with that? So, John, welcome. Diane. Thank you, Matt. Welcome. Good morning. And uh, so, first of all, tell us a little bit about, well, tell us about your experience um, in the long-term care industry, each of you, and, and what you've been doing. Sure. Thank you, Matt. St. Anthony's Health Care and Rehab Center has been serving the community of Jefferson Parish for four, 40 years, and uh, we're real proud of that, and uh, we have an amazing staff, and uh, it's just a wonderful community that we live in, Jefferson Parish. We have many, many uh, positive relationships and uh, with hospice companies, home, home health, hospitals, and uh, we just feel, we feel very blessed that we get to do what we are doing at St. Anthony's. Great, great. And Diane? Yes, we've been in the business over 37 years, personally in the business. So it's definitely a business that you've come, you're in it for the love of it. You're in it to serve the others. You're in it to understand and give back to the community. Like Mr. Morvant said, we are locally owned. So that says a lot. We're all about community, bringing in the resources locally to help brighten up our lives of our residents and support the families. So we're always here for them. Great. great. So when someone is in the market for you know, the, the home for their loved one, what are some important uh, char- characteristics or things that they should look for when making that selection? Well, I would definitely do an on-site tour at, and, uh, and just like you do when you shop. Uh, sample the areas, sample uh, several different facilities, and um, feel the vibe in a facility. How are you greeted? Uh, Just like when you go to a restaurant or a retail store, how how are you greeted there? And um, and ask questions, ask, you know, have your questions ready, actually, and uh, ask questions and um, just, and engage with residents uh, as you're touring and, and employees. You know, the, uh, the vibe of the staff is critical. Uh, how is morale? Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, we have an amazing staff. I'm so proud of our staff and, and what they do. We get compliments so often mm-hmm. uh, from family members and from providers, uh, you know, whether, th- that, whether it be home health or nurses, et cetera, visiting our facility. So, that's great. That's great. Diane, any? With that, we are. We do have resources available when, if you are looking for placement in the facility, a lot of us have resources. We can go on the internet, you can Google, you can look up. There are general questions. There are associations online that you can look up. If if your loved one is in the hospital, the social workers and the case managers can direct, direct you there. There are sites as Nursing Home Compare that you can go to and you can compare to the facilities. You can do a range of your local facilities in your area and you can expand it out, whether it's North Shore or South Shore. But with that, when you're looking, it's going to give a rating. The rating is a five star, which we're very proud of. We are a five star mm-hmm. facility and it takes a lot. It takes a team that collaborates together to build that, to earn that five star. Mm-hmm. So we have earned that in our facility. And with that, just like Mr. Morvant said, 
you're going to know when you come into a facility, whenever you go into any restaurant or business, when you come in, there's going to be the standards. You're going to look. There's going to be those services you need for that loved one. Most of the facilities, can they all have that service. So if you look them up online or their website, you're going to see they're all compared to that. But it's hands-on when you come into that facility and make that tour, make that time, pick your facilities and compare, go in. You're going to see, you're going to see if the staff is engaging. You're going to see the face. You're going to see if they welcome you. They're going to, you're going to see if they offer you assistance. When you walk in, our staff knows a new face. And if we don't know that individual, our staff is going to ask them for help. Even the ones that we know, you can tell. If they're going to engage in you, you know they're going to engage in their loved one. Right. And you can see that throughout. If the residents look happy, if they're engaging with the residents themselves, with their, their fellow community, mm-hmm. you're going to know. You're going to know this is the place. And and I think vibe is so important in, right, in, in everything that we do, whether it's, uh, again, picking out a nursing home, a, a restaurant, um, a bar, even to friends, right? Sure. Or a gym. Yes. Yeah, go, going to the gym. Correct. Jo- John and I are members of the same gym, so uh, <laughs> that, that's why we like to uh, tease each other about that. Yes. So what what can someone do during the holidays um, when they do have a loved one you know, in, in a home? What can they do to help make that brighter for them? And then from there, what do you all do that's kind of special? Sure. Well, um, family members oftentimes relatives who live out of town come come to New Orleans and uh, to be with other family members. So we see uh, the visits, the number of visits and people increase over the holidays, which is such a positive thing right there. Um, it could be a special food that your mother or father or uncle enjoyed during the holidays at, at the family uh, uh, get-togethers. Mm-hmm. And so, and then of course, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, children uh elderly love seeing uh their relatives you know their their younger relatives and uh, family members and so and then on top of that um on top of that the school children we see a tremendous increase of visitation uh, of visits from school children and they sing christmas carols which is outstanding and they uh, bring crafts that they made related to the holidays and or do a craft class with the residents, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, I, rem- I remember as a child going to some of the homes do you? And, yeah. and singing for them. And as a kid, I think, what am I doing in here? <laughs> I don't know these people, these old people sitting in here. But, you know, from that standpoint, when you're seven, eight years old, you, your brain's not really paying attention to much beyond what's, what's the candy maybe that they're giving me. <laughs> True. But from their standpoint now, as, uh, you know, we get a little bit older, you can see it can bring joy because maybe, Absolutely. you're right, maybe their grandchild doesn't necessarily live there or isn't close, but they still want to have that type of companionship. And, and when I, I teach actually the uh, Fit Circuit class uh, at the gym, and I look across, you can look into the child care, and I see some of them, they're just looking at the little pig kids that are coming and pounding on, uh, on the window. So, yeah, that's super important to okay. bring children like that in and sure. so they can get that type of feeling. It's great that you all do that and bring that joy if it's not, you know, not, not there for them or really accessible from their families. Sure. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, there were some other things that you all do, too. Uh, Give me an example. You, uh, was it the, uh, the Alzheimer's walk that y'all had a, a big? Um, you just do some other things yeah, in the community recently. too. Yeah. Yes, in November. You want to comment on that, Diane? Yes, we did the Alzheimer's walk. It's a big event that we support. It's it's a foundation. It's a good cause, raising money for the cure of yes. Alzheimer's. And with that, it, it's just it's it's again it's bringing everybody together. It's bringing the community together. It's bringing our residents. It was at the Baby Cakes Field, so it was very Mm -hmm. convenient for us at our facility, too, as far as um, commuting by residents, too. So we had a group of residents that came with us and staff members as well. So we came together as a team and supported that cause. And it's just a time to come together, enjoy one another, enjoy the friendship, enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it it is an illness. It is a hard illness, and we do recognize that. It's, It's hard for our family members and our staff. 
You know, for right. us, for us, it's not just the business of residents living at our facility for us taking care of. At the end of the day, we know it's the health side of it that we have to take care of the clinical side of it, but it's extended family for us. Our residents look forward to us seeing us every day. We look forward to them. There's a bond there more than than some, being at a hospital. It is a healthcare facility, but we share a longer bond with our residents. So, and I so and I saw that, that and I saw that mm-hmm. firsthand when I came to visit. And as as we went around, John, and um, you, you knew all the residents, their names firsthand, and you know they may or may not have recognized you again, depending upon what their memories are, but how involved you are. So I think that's critical when you're looking for someone. You know, it's not just their daily nurses that are involved in the relationship, but I, when you can see the the president of of the home or, or the executive director that is involved and knows the names of the staff and, of course, um, your residents. And I think that's an important clue when we talk about vibe of, of choosing that location. And so I do do commend you, Thank you. you know, on, on doing so. Thank you. Well, it goes back to even the housekeepers, uh, the la- laundry, maintenance. They uh, Housekeepers think about this for a moment, that, that they visit every room in their section every day. So... Um, they get to know the residents in many cases better than uh, anyone else. Right. So um, it, it, it's, as Diane mentioned, team. It, it's everyone that, that makes up uh, our team and provides the care. So give us a I know you have, and it, it's kind of a, a hot topic, I guess, in the nursing home um, industry is, is memory care and having memory care units. So I know you're constructing one or renovating one of your wings for it. So share a little bit about, when we talk about the Alzheimer's block, share a little bit about what's important for that and then what is, what's special about yours. Thank you. Yeah. This is Diane's expertise. All right, here we for go. For our memory oh, unit. Yeah, nice softball <laughs> question for you. Our memory unit. We looked at it as, as a need in the community for that, having that secure unit. So at this point, we are in the stages and working close to finishing up the secure unit. And with that is recognizing that you need to bring, it's that person-centered care. It's Mm -hmm. understanding what level they're at and understanding you can still bring in the simple things to stimulate them. Bright colors, simple tasks, busy things and it's individualizing that person centered you may they may have focus on one thing for three minutes but that's success they may not be able to sit at a regular bingo game because they can't they can't understand that concept right but it's not their fault so we have to adapt and put put in interventions in place that will help stimulate them at that level and it is the happiness it's music therapy it's that continue and pick up. If, if they left off here, if they're doing things, a task or putting a puzzle, but they get up, well, that task is over. Mm-hmm. They'll come back for it, go off to another one. Right. That's excellent. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And as we go to the break, um, we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then we'll also lead in with our segment questions from left field. We all get to <laughs> field some <laughs> random questions and see how smart or how smart you are not. But it's a lot of fun. So stick with us as we come back uh, here to segment four. Thanks. St. Anthony's Healthcare and Rehab is Metairie's best kept secret since 1977. Located at 6th. 001 Airline Highway, across from the Saints Practice Facility, St. Anthony's core values of teamwork, professionalism, honesty, respect, and excellent care have made them the choice of area families for generations. One step inside, and your loved ones will feel like they're home away from home. Your admissions counselor will walk you and your loved ones step by step through the process to ensure everyone is comfortable. St. Anthony's provides skilled nursing care, rehabilitation services, and is opening soon a new secured memory care center with 24-hour staffing. Private and semi-private rooms are available for your loved one's comfort and peace of mind. Schedule your free consultation today. Call 
888-888-8448 or go to stanthonynh.com. Metairie's best kept secret since 1977 is now unveiled for you. outside again? I forgot. See, such a beautiful day. Wait, that's why I came out here. I left my keys out here. Where could they be? Oh, they're right here on the ground. Let me just bend down and pick them up for a second. Oh, oh, oh. Man, I sure wish I had the Movement Academy easy to use balance and memory restoration program this holiday season. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. So a special holiday edition of Questions Out of Left Field. We always have a good time with that. Um, so they are tint, not tinted, but uh, I guess weighted towards Christmas and holidays. And uh, I want to thank Google again for just being <laughs> there and coming up with this, because if not, we'd have to break out the old encyclopedias and come up with that information if you remember what those are. That's all we used to have to write our papers by. That's we didn't have true. Google. Yeah, true. I remember that. My son's looking up things on the internet. I said, do you want an encyclopedia? He goes, no, Dad, what's that? That's an actual book. <laughs> we had books that came once a month. And he just looks at me like I'm stupid. You know, <laughs> what, what are those things? All right, so number one. How many countries actually use the term Santa Claus? I don't even know the name, just how many countries Please. use the term Santa Claus? Eight. Diane? Fourteen. It's right in between. It's ten. Ten countries, actually, including, well, actually, be eleven, I'm sorry, with the United oh, States, oh, yeah. use right. Santa Claus. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Of course. Like, how did you come up with these things? I just cool. do. I just do. All right. Here's another good one. What is the average weight gain that a person takes on over the holidays? How many pounds does a person put on over mm. the holidays? Go first, please. Three. Three. John? I'm going to go with five. Five? Both of y'all are too high. Actually, it's one. One. Well, that's impressive. One. We think, you know, we put on all this weight. We're like, oh, my God, I'm bloated. I've eaten this. I've eaten that. I must have put on 17 pounds. No, one. One pound is, is the is the average well, average they, weight gain over well, the holiday but we period. we are in New Orleans. So we are in New Orleans, so, so that would mean. It's a little exception, probably. We're probably 1.739er, <laughs> I think, is well, what's that's good news. However you slice it, that's good news. One pound. <laughs> Right, wow. Mr. Legs, we can do it. We can get there. <laughs> we can get there. All right, here's another one. How much money does the average American spend on Christmas gifts? Mm, everybody at home is going, well, I know I've probably spent X. An average of one Christmas gift? Or no, 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 no. For the For the season. For the season. How much does the average American spend on Christmas gifts for the season? 
1200 I feel That's like I'm on the price is right right now on this one. What's <laughs> 2500 2500 Well, you both overbid on that one, so <laughs> neither of you get the showcase showdown. It's actually $929 I I is, was in is what it is. Okay, just shy of a thousand. Just shy okay. of a grand, right? I don't know what y'all are spending. Maybe you're in that range. Who knows? But that's no, what the average American higher. spends on Christmas <laughs> gifts. Okay, here's kind of a morbid one, but it's kind of funny, too, at the same time. And especially on a day like this here in New Orleans, how many people die from hypothermia in America every year? Or cold, say we'll call it cold weather. And, and it's actually pretty cold here today. <laughs> One. One. In, in, a, in America. America. In America. In how many year? people die? Yeah, a in year. One year. I'll cold weather. With, uh, 27. 27. It's actually a little over 800. Wow. wow low I, was. I guess we're, we're in the sunny <laughs> south. You know, so. right. I've been going high, so I went low. Yeah, low. yeah, one. <laughs> 800. So actually more people die from cold uh, weather related than from heat. Believe that or not. Even mm-hmm. though we're here, we say, oh, my God, I'm dying out here. It's so hot. Right? <laughs> but no, it's not many people die from, from heat. Traffic accidents being number one on that one. But uh, – 800 cold weather. All right, here's a final one. Which country invented the sport, and I use sport loosely, of curling? Dan's looking at me like, what the hell is curling? That's probably, what are you talking about? Curling, you know, like on ice. Oh, curling on ice. Mm. It was, uh, let's see, the old Czechoslovakia, (laughs) (laughs) the Ukraine. (laughs) Uh, I know it's in... So Europe, we'll go with Europe. We'll say, well, yeah. you're Europe, so it's it's not that okay. that side of Europe. So I'll give you one other guess. Would you like to take a guess? Sure. Um, I'm trying to think like Olympics and stuff. I don't know. Scotland. Mm. Scotland oh. was where wow. curling was invented sometime in the 16th century. Yes, the, the wow. great sport of curling. Have you participated? In I have that? never participated in curling. And uh, I, I'm not sure I ever will participate in curling because we don't have large sheets of ice here in the New Orleans area at, at any point in time, I think. <laughs> so maybe this yeah, weekend on the North Friday Shore. Night, right. Friday night, we might actually get some snow. But, yeah, so those are questions from left field for this week. Here is a swing and a drive toward left field and deep. Yeah, that was good. Huh? That's not too bad. Not too mm, bad. That was fun. Yes, so I like doing that uh, every month. I'm sorry, not every week, as uh, just to have a little levity. So as we finish up here, um, how can we get in touch with you? What, what, what are the ways to get in contact with St. Anthony's? You can reach us at our phone number as 504-733-8448. You can ask for our admission coordinator. If she's not available, just ask for any of our administrative staff. And we'll be able to assist you, whether you want to come in for a, little, a tour or a little information on the phone. You can visit us on our website, stanthonysnh.com. You can request for a tour as well on our website. All right, great. And do you have a Facebook page? We have Facebook. You can reach us at St. Anthony's Nursing Home and Rehab. All right, excellent. Thank you all for being on. We Thank want you. to uh, wish you from the second half uh, in the Health and Fitness Show, wish you uh, happy holidays this year. Um, stay moving. And we will see you back in January for some 2018 resolutions and a great new year for yourself. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays.
Oh, oh, oh.